Um, okay, so good evening and thanks for being here. Um, just before I begin, I guess I want to just um, express my own uh, personal uh, thanks to the rest of the, the group for what has been a, a really invigorating couple of days uh, so far. Um, and so I hope that, that uh, the, the comments that, that, that emerge from this, this conversation are seen um, partly as a, as a work in progress and a converse, an ongoing conversation that will happen over the next couple of days. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, should I stand at the podium? Okay. Um, okay. I don't have a PowerPoint or anything, but um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I think that the. Um, how this was conceptualized was not necessarily to be uh, a response to, to Edgar in any way. It was more meant to, to be a series of comments that would be a conversation. So in that, in that spirit, I will, I will um, uh, give my thoughts, I guess. Um, so um, I guess to begin, uh, let us perhaps imagine the following. Um, and we will imagine it in a place, a mythical place called the uh, city of the Global South, imagine it with a series of hyphens in between, the city of the Global South, uh, a mythical place um, on another planet perhaps. Um, so it begins with a, um, a, a tall pillar of, of, of smoke rising into the, into the blue winter sky, um, and then when we get a bit closer and we follow that tall um, pillar of smoke, um, we realize as we go through the back streets behind an industrial um, a sort of a relatively half abandoned industrial area and we keep going further to the um, abandoned spaces behind that industrial area, we find ourselves um, staring across a valley at a, um, a, a settlement which is not on the, the city cadastre, it's not marked on the city map, but it's a settlement of perhaps 2,000 people. Um, and what's happening is that half the settlement is on fire. Um, uh, flames rise, uh, 20 meters into the sky, um, and of course, as the, um, the bits and pieces that people have gathered together to build their houses are burning, there's a, there's a black cloud of smoke rising into the sky. Um, against the horizon, um, and periodically consumed by the, by the smoke as the wind uh, changes and obviously drives the fire forward, um, we notice uh, a kind of iconic image of a man standing on the roof, throwing a bucket of water at the fire, a, a kind of... Um, defiant but perhaps hopeless gesture against the, 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 um, against the, the fire. Um, and here's the end point of a long human chain of people passing water in buckets along to throw at the fire. Um, of course, um, this is, as much as it's a space that's not on the map um, in, in any formal sense, it is not a space that is outside of the cir various circuits of capital and power. Um, in fact, we might think of um, the, the, the notion of fire as itself a, a kind of um, um, allegory of, of, of the rampant uh, process of capitalism, perhaps. Um, and this man stands at the end, end of this chain in what perhaps uh, a, a sort of physical manifestation of what someone like Abdul Malik Simon might talk about as human infrastructure, literally passing of the, of the water between the different people. Um, but what's important, I think, is to, to recognize that um, as much as this fire which is moving through the settlement and burning everything in its wake uh, is a destructive force, um, and here I'm going to borrow from a colleague of, of, of all of ours here at WITS, Matthew Willem Solomon, we need to also recognize that the fire is a, uh, a productive force at the same time, productive of a range of different processes. Um, it's productive of uh, race, for example, uh, in, very, in very real senses. While, while we're standing looking at the fire, um, a man next to us, a uh, middle-class man who's also followed the, 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 the smoke to come and see what's going on, and, um, curses under his breath, we black people are cursed. Um, the next day, when we move into the space and we, 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 we're walking around as people are rebuilding um, their spaces, um, a white man who is there um, to give assistance to uh, an employee of his um, and, rem um, and, and remarking on the way in which people are rebuilding lives uh, um, utters to us, um, uh, uh, black people are amazing. They can, they can cope with all these, all these difficulties. We white people would never cope in such a situation. Um, it's, 
it's productive also of, of, of um, the sort of deserving and the undeserving in a sense as well. Um, the next day, NGOs arrive in the space handing out um, handing out uh, parcels to people who's, who, who have lost a lot of their, their, their um, domestic um, objects. Um, but, there's a, but there's a newspaper article the next day that says that people were um, taking these parcels and selling them uh, to make money, a kind of sense that they were undeserving, which prompted many of the NGOs to say, okay, well, our job is now done. We're going to move off out of this space. Um, and in some senses, it's productive of, of life itself as well. Um, Bare life, in a sense. Somebody remarks, everything is burnt, all I'm left with is the clothes on my back. Um, what I want to do is to, is to think about this fire itself as a, as a, um, part, as, a as I said, a productive network. Uh, we might think about it in, in a, um, I'm going to use the word, an infrastructure, which kind of connects together um, and pulls people into a range of different um, relations um, to various forms of power, capital, etc. Ruthie, in her amazing talk yesterday, spoke about infrastructures of feeling. I'm not, I'm not going to try and hazard um, to explain exactly what she meant by that, but what she did go on to say is that, um, at least give a, a very um, cursory definition of infrastructure, um, saying that it's about, um, it, it underlies productivity. So infrastructure is not simply just the material objects themselves, but they, they, they become infrastructure by virtue of being connected into, into various networks and, and trajectories. Um, I mean, I guess this is what is at stake when Michael Mann speaks about infrastructural power. Um, and while I'm not necessarily going to defend uh, um, all the ways in which he thinks about power, I think what he's obviously trying to get at is this idea that, that power can function not just through uh, a process of, 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 um, of, of oppression um, and resistance to that oppression, but also the ways in which it pulls people into various, into, in, uh, and, and implicates people into various networks. Um, There's obviously a much broader literature on infrastructure, which I'm, I'm not going to in, in, engage here, but what it, uh, what's at stake in a lot of this literature in the, is the way in which it, it as I said, in, in bringing people into these networks and bringing people and implicating them into these circuits, it marks them and makes them as different kind of subjects. Um, what was um, interesting, I think, after the fire, when, it, when, 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 when I returned to that space, um, what, what remained... Well, the one most obvious thing that remained um, was the state infrastructure of, um, of TAPS. Uh, what, what we have in, in, uh, in many of the informal settlements in, in, in South Africa is that as a way of kind of um, providing barely enough services to, 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 um, uh, for the kind of processes of, of, of reproduction, I guess, is that the state will provide taps at certain points, so at, at the, um, you know, at every sort of 10 or 15 or 20 households will share a, will share a uh, municipal tap. Um, and what remained of, obviously after the fire is that is the taps um, hadn't burned. Some of them had melted in the fire, others had been broken off um, as people were desperately trying to get water to put out the fire. Um, but I think the, 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 the important point is to realize is that is that walking through the space and seeing these um, seeing these 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 taps as the kind of only remaining infrastructure? Um, oh, that uh, the other remaining infrastructure were the very tall um, uh, lights that are that are above a lot of these informal settlements, which don't have electricity, but uh, as a kind of gesture towards um, safety and security, they 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 erect very tall, almost um, uh, sort of uh, stadium lights, which shine at night across the whole space. So these were not, uh, these were not burnt. Um, so rather than seeing this as a kind of forgotten space, uh, we can see that in some ways there are some circuits which enter into the space. Um, equally speaking, um, as, the, as, as the place was burning, people were running from, um, from the nearby factories to, to, to try and rescue things in their, um, uh, in their homes. Um, and the next day, people were walking from the, uh, from the nearby... Um, Hardware store carrying bits, bits of wood, etc., to to, re, to rebuild houses. So this, we can see that this is not a forgotten space as much as it might not be on the on the um, on the map. But it's certainly in, it's infiltrated in many different ways. Um, uh, John Law and Anne Marie Moll, who are um, within the kind of actor network theory uh, sort of uh, branch of thinking, which I'm not sure if it's if that's a rude word in this in this um, 
in, in this group um, or not. But they, they speak about, I mean, thinking about um, different ways, different kinds of network space and, and connectivities. They, one of the ways in which they think about this is what they call fire space. Um, and, and by that, what they mean is this idea that, that um, we can think about, we can think about um, the relationship between, between, um, between uh, space and power as this kind of uh, flickering of absence and presence, the, 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 the here and the now. And I think it, it, that may be, um, for me, just, just that, that simple term of this idea of fire space has been quite interesting to think about because it suggests rather than a geography of, of, of these spaces as an outside or an, or, an, or an external space, they're somehow always in the center of, of, um, of, of these kind of uh, assemblages or agglomerations of, of the urban, um, even if it's always in this kind of constant flickering. So they're there and they're not there, there and they're not there. Um, and I think that's, for me as a geographer, quite a helpful way of thinking about, about that relationship. So rather than a geography of the outside, this is a geography of of different, um, different moments of emergence in the, in the, in the center. Um, so thinking about fire then as, as, a, as an infrastructure, as, a, as something which connects people into circuits, I'm not suggesting, of course, a cynical politics that is um, that these spaces like the informal settlements are only, um, that it's only through disaster that they get, that they get uh, seen and engaged with, although, of course, that, that may also be true in many ways. Um, but I think that is a cynical politics that we, that we don't necessarily want to in, in, engage. Um, but the fire, it reveals, as I've said, it produces in, in many different ways and constructs these forms of subjectivity. Um, one of the, just as an aside, one of the ways, one of the circuits that people get connected into, for example, if we think about the, um, the object of the primer stove, for example, the primer stove is always to blame for, for these fires, which are, which are not uncommon. Um, in, very, in, in similar sites um, across the country and in many other um, sort of cities of the global south, if you will. Um, and the primer stove, of course, is both something which, which is a tool that people use every day. It's, a, it's, it's something that, that, um, that is the sort of basis of how people can cook and warm themselves, etc., in a context where people don't have access to electricity, where electricity isn't part of the space. Um, but of course it's always also to blame for the fires. It's always somebody who's knocked over the primer stove. It's always a kid that's at home, that's sick, that isn't at school, that knocks over a primer stove. Um, so it's also the object of, it's also the way in which, so, so, so being sort of connected into the circuit of the primer stove is also that which marks people as somehow um, subjects of these sorts of spaces in, in many different ways. Um, Frederick Le Marcis, who, who wrote a um, um, a really interesting article in his engagement with Johannesburg about um, about the, the suffering body of the AIDS um, of the of the uh, the AIDS sufferer um, speaks about the the, the um, materiality of these embodied embodied intersections with power and with subjectivity in various different ways. Um, so he speaks, for example, about the the body of the um, of the AIDS sufferer that moves between the clinic, the informal settlement, the t the, the, the the informal um, uh, minibus taxi, um, the freeway, uh, the rural areas, and eventually maybe the, 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 the morgue. Um, and what he's doing here, I think, is, he's is, is as he's connecting people into these various points of, um, of intersection with power and subjectivity, he's not suggesting that there's a single homogenous subjectivity, but there's, there's a subjectivity which is variously put together. Um, a series of, of, of kind of tactics, if you will, of, of how people access the city. Um, so let's return to the fire then. As I've said, the day after, people are rebuilding the space. All that remains is the broken taps of the municipal standpipes, uh, as I said, broken so that they could stop the fire. Um, it is, in many ways, as we said, it's a space of abandonment in some senses, but, it, but not quite. It's also, there's enough there that just give people, gives people enough to, um, enough to survive, enough of a kind of bare life to, to, to maintain an existence. Um, NGOs arrive, they, as I said, they give out aid. Um, the city housing department arrives and promises to give people uh, uh, new materials so that they can rebuild their, 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 their wood and tin houses. Press and the TV, TV are there for some, for some days afterwards. Um, but it also asks the question, why do people arrive? Why are people in this space? What happens when they come? What trajectories are they caught into? Why would they be in this space? Um, are they simply victims of this space? Um, 
And is the city in some ways, can we think about the city in some ways as a space of, 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 of hope and liberation? Um, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, that's a, um, it's not a space I want to entertain. Um, rather, what I want to think about is, uh, James Ferguson speaks about uh, expectations. He's got that book, Expectations of Modernity, um, in which he speaks about the kind of truncated futures uh, that people experience in this moment of almost becoming modern and then having that pulled, the, the, the rug pulled out from, from under them. Um, so there's these imaginations of being modern, of being urban. In the South African context, I would say there's these imagine, imaginations of being liberated, of being a kind of post-apartheid subject. Um, but of course, the present is imperfect. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the informal settlement, it's the fire, it's the constantly having to rebuild. Um, and I think, of course, there are important politics in, in pursuing the... In, in contesting and resisting against the processes that, that do that. Um, on the other hand, there's also politics in celebrating the vitality of that informality. Um, but I think there's also a, a, an important, uh, if not a politics, then perhaps a kind of uh, call, perhaps as, 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 as those of us who are researchers, to engage with the ways in which people um, orient themselves to these futures, think about themselves as subjects in the future, even though they are building that through the burnt-out embers of the present. Um, and so, just um, to, to, to belabor the point of it, um, if we do think about fire as an infrastructure, and if we think about it in this sort of absence, presence, this, this there and then not there, um, I think perhaps it, it helps us, on one hand, to destabilize this geography of center and margin, and therefore think differently about this sort of city, this, this, this mythical city of the global south, perhaps. Um, and it also, I think, it allows us to to, to really engage with the fine-grained ways in which people are constructing that future and thinking about... Them. I must have finished now. Okay, well, I'm, I'm done. Um, <laughs> that's all right. And, and, and are really thinking about themselves into the future. And I think we need to take seriously those ways in which people are um, calling on, if not the state, if not capital, but a range of other networks, calling on those things to be made into subjects. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. But thank you.